special event alert. I left my badge at my girlfriend's house, and she left for work, which is excuse number nine for being late for changeover, your weekly space news and variety show. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and I'm joined by Mr. History, Eric Perrot. Presidential debate listener number one. And and our man in the closet, (laughs) Jake Wall. Uh... I had to listen on my car radio because I didn't have cable or anything. So. <laughs> We're here to bring you the latest headlines and updates pertinent to all Guardians and to the other lower branches as well. So take your seats, get informed, and have a laugh as we present Late for Changeover. Woo! All Good right. to see you on this debate. There was much rejoicing. Eve, right in the middle of the debates is when we're filming this thing. We bought, I think we all needed a break, to be honest with you. Yes. We were trying to be good Americans, but we weren't getting Listening. any information. So. I was dying a slow death. Yeah, oh, he, each bad. one of them was playing two truths and a lie. Every one of them. You're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> which one of those um, three things was a lie? And Eric was right. Uh, Trump can't speak, but he is funny. He's a lot funnier than any Democrat. Yeah, so man. I'll vote for him just for that. Because he, <laughs> he makes he makes me laugh. So. Makes you laugh. <laughs> so I'm going to the poorhouse. At least I can get a chuckle out of it. So. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Well, and- my my taxes hit on my fucking mortgage. I was like, God damn. Oh yes, brother. Yes. So, Property taxes. I did not plan car for insurance. That one. Yeah. 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 Those property taxes went up in Colorado bad. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, yeah. They did. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. Ugh. Good yeah, he's, he's a good guy. Yeah, good guy. Yeah, we voted for it. <laughs> yes, we did. Guy. Well, Fall Denver voted. Denver voted for it. <laughs> exactly. What you get for living in California East, you know? Yeah. So, well, California. sure, sure. And he's a businessman, so he knows how much money he's taken from us. So, no offense to you, Californians, by the way. No offense. I just want them to okay, just pause taxes right now, and balance a budget. That's it. Oh. Just, just please. Please. That wasn't since the Newt Gingrich days, man. Hey, are we I'm talking about the VA, the government? You're talking about all of the above, which is I know that's like the. Yeah. I might as well ask for world peace. You oh, know, yeah. it's a right. huge ask. But I mean, if I got to fucking balance my budget, you should have to balance my budget. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. have to come back to reality in theory. <laughs> All right, that's a good call. Eh, my rant is over. Right. Marty said, "Let's not play politics." Well, I'll, I'll get you, I'll get your rant going again with the second story. Right, ah, so, let's go. Uh, but this show, I'll put it out tomorrow on 9-11. 23rd. Yeah. Yeah. Big day. Like Big I said, day. I always get weird. I don't know what to call it. You know, uh, it's not an anniversary. That's right. It's no. not the twenty third anniversary of nine eleven. I mean, although that is. wording is not we wrong, but it's dark. hard to call disasters an anniversary, right? Yeah, that's but, tough. Uh, but it's also a day of eight, remembrance. A day yeah, of remembrance. that's probably better. Or we can call it, like they call it on base, Patriot Day. Tomorrow's Patriot oh, Day. Patriot Day. Which is only the 22nd instance of Patriot Day. So hmm. let's go figure that one out. Well, that's because... I- I know. The day you can't count the first incident as patriotic. Well, no, I, I suppose not. I suppose not. So, um, well, but in a way, it was patriotic, I guess, but not for Americans. Oh, well, sure, yeah. sure. That was tough. Uh, but you know, hey, hats off to all the victims and their families, especially the especially the ones who made it through, and then like contracted cancer or something oh, else yeah. from all the debris. That's that's Horrific. just as tragic. Yeah, yep. it's terrible. Yeah. But uh, I thought, um, rather than go down through all the stats and everything, maybe we could share. I know we've done it before, but I don't remember. So share where you were on 9-11. So for me, I had, I like six months earlier, I had just signed up to join the reserves. And I joined as a one Charlie six into the eight Swiss. And I finally got a school slot that started like late August, I think, something like that. So they were training us as mission crew chiefs out in Vandenberg 
on the swing shifts. I think we went in at one or two um, and then trained to like 10 or something like that. And I was asleep. I was, I was like, oh, I should get up and go run. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to run. <laughs> and, my sis- and my sister called me uh, and she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm sleeping. I am. I got swing shift, swing shift training. And she goes, turn the TV on. Um, and it was, I think I turned it on right after the first plane hit. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Right. Yeah. And then, you know, what was it? I, I, I don't remember the time span, 10 minutes or whatever, before that next one hit. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Right. And, and you could that- tell the size of the second one, whereas the first one, it was like, uh, I don't know. Was that a kind of hard to see? Yeah. 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 You know? But then you yeah. see that full scale jet on the second At one? full speed was like, oh, my oh, God. Unbelievable. So, yeah. And then uh, they, they locked us down from there and brought us into – uh, I think the, the auditorium or something and tried to brief us on whatever they knew. And I was like, wow, this is, this is, this is insane. Right. How about you, Eric? Where are you at? I was stationed at Peterson with the 21st space command IG team. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we were in the process of conducting an operational readiness inspection an ORI with, um, Peterson, as well as the Cheyenne Mountain. And uh, I was on duty at Cheyenne Mountain getting ready to kick off a, an attempted gate runner. Oh, really? Trying to get in. Yeah. And um, got a call over the radio for all inspectors to return to, to Pete and the IG building. And we got back in and Colonel Baldwin at the time, who was the IG, yeah. briefed us on what was happening. So the four cops me and two other inspectors and the major, uh, we all immediately went to the unit and volunteered our time. So we immediately got weapons, went into 12 hour shifts, locked down Peterson. And that's what I did for almost two weeks. Yeah. Did they let you go home or not that day? Uh, they put me, put me to work almost immediately. And then after a 12 hour shift, I I was, Oh, but they didn't confine you to base or no, no, we were able to leave. Wow. That's wild. Yeah, it's wild. Tuesday morning, who would have known it, right? Oh, crazy. Yeah, Jake, crazy. where were you? At? Was, were you at Sibbers? No, I was up at Ielson. I had. Oh, you still I, were. Okay. I was. I was at that fighter squadron. Okay. So I was getting ready to go to work, lacing up my boots, literally lacing up my boots, and um, I got a call from my girlfriend at the time. She's like, "Turn on the TV," and turn it on it, it was right around the same time you picked it up right marty because it was oh right the first tower was hit yeah. and then we're sitting there watching and it was like oh crap well that yeah it Look was that because i think i was got I, hit and then i was like right what is going on i was like oh i better get to work i don't know what's going on yep um and well, then I think one of the towers went down right before I left for work. Oh man. And I was listening Whoa. on the radio and I was like driving to work. Um drive because I was living in North Pole, Alaska. <laughs> oh yeah. Appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> North Pole. You could see the big Santa across from my apartment building. Oh. Um, <laughs> it, yeah. You um, know, guys, when the that that last plane hit the Pentagon and you oh, saw the footage. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, holy shit, man. Where what's the next target? How mm-hmm. many planes have they hijacked? Right. So right. Uh, yeah. man, I, I was ready and to that, shoot anybody coming towards the base almost, thinking about it. It's like damn we, we got sure. into base and then we we didn't have any orders to reload the planes, but we stripped the planes from all the training equipment. Yeah. And left them empty. Um but we didn't know if the pipeline, the Alaskan pipeline then was a target. A target, yeah. We just oh, didn't know yeah. what was going yeah. on. So then right, right. they were going to do basically air air superiority patrol. I mean, yeah, not an 8 the but the F-16s. Everybody. You know, the F-16s yeah. were on alert. Oh, and sure. And then the F-15s right. down at Elmendorf were on alert. Oh, um, man. A-10s That's are just crazy. chilling. We'll just, <laughs> we'll get there eventually. What Talk did, about a historic event, man. That's part of history. Sure. Uh, we and, were, and it's 
It's Amazing. one of the, it's, I think it's one of the other things besides basic that connects like every service member during that time. Yeah. Big time, all right? remember where you were. Yeah. Um, what'd you say they, that you did for work, Jake? I mean, don't, later that day, they called you, they called you guys in. Well, no, were we were, I was already radio? going in. I was oh, already going okay. in just for a North cause I was Alaska and it, it was such a delay. We're way out on the Pacific yeah. time zone. So it was in the morning. For right, us, right. like bright and early, um, but well, and I, and I give those guys credit because uh, nobody yeah. nobody knew what to tell everybody. That's Except, exactly like, it. Cancel classes, close the base. Uh, let's try to figure something lock out. it down, man. They we did, down, and, but they of course, it, down base, and you right, had to they, show proof that you were right. Like, they told us classes were canceled, so yeah. we just spent the day watching TV, like you know. Can you believe this? Can you believe he just Marty? Did you end up again? staying out there the whole time, or did they allow you to leave? Because there was no flights to get you back to. Oh no, we 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 stayed. Uh, I mean, we were in the middle of you the had course to finish up class. Like right? Yeah, we had to finish that course, right? Yeah. Um. So they, they just they briefed us later that afternoon, and then you know the next morning we got another briefing and. Uh, whenever they kind of relax the FAA stuff, they're like, okay, go back to class. You know, yeah. everything kind of was returning that there wasn't any imminent threat at that point that they could figure out. Right. Yeah. So I wonder how, if, if that, that has to be the most common phrase that day, right. Turn on the TV, right. That has oh, to be the, the most TV. common yeah, phrase. Turn on the TV. Almost everybody. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I, I, I have yet talked you know, talked to hundreds of people about it, but I've yet talked to somebody who was like, eh, I was just, you know, I was watching uh, my daily soap opera and then they broke in. Nobody yeah. was watching when it happened. It no. just happened. And you're like, how many how phone calls happen? from parents were made that day? Oh, oh I immediately sure. got right. one. Are you okay? You? Yes, yeah. I'm yeah. all right. I'm fine. Yeah. And I think I, I think I, I don't think they called. I think I called them. I was like, Hey, don't worry about it. We're, uh, I'm okay. I'm good. Know? Yeah. So, Crazy uh, times, man. Yeah, ho you know, hopefully, uh, and and I, I as as maybe naive as it sounds, I I think maybe we've done a pretty good job in the years since because nothing like that's happened. Now, I I know that to preface that, but they've you know they've they've probably thwarted twice as many as they've let us know about. I hope. Yeah, I would agree. You know, I hope. So I hope. Yeah. But fucking Richard Reed, man, that's isn't that the guy's name who was a shoe bomber? He's still affecting my life. Yeah, that's the case. That guy still affecting Reed? my life. Richard Reed, maybe. Yeah, I think it was Richard Reed, wasn't it? Something like I that. I couldn't remember his name. Yeah, he was the one who fucking tried to bomb the plane with the <laughs> shoe. <laughs> the shoe. <laughs> now forevermore, we got to take our shoes off. It's so dumb. <laughs> anyway. Uh, well, so, uh, again, thoughts go out to all the families and all the victims and all the people who helped. So let's make yep. sure we don't have another one of those damn things. And all the service members who lost their lives since fighting. Yeah. Like service Europe member, and, firefighters, uh, yeah, first police. responders. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Yeah. So, well, let's get to the news, shall we? Let's get let's to something. Get to the let's news. get to some good news. I like oh, good yeah? news. For Boeing. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay, let's from, not be ridiculous. <laughs> well, no, on a relative scale, it's good news. So yeah. from spacenews.com comes this article. Starliner oh, finally back. landed back safely in New Mexico. So uncrewed, of course. Historic day. But it did come down. So. Uh, leaving his crew behind in orbit, Boeing's troubled Starliner spacecraft undocked from the ISS Friday, September 6th, and chalked up, chalked up, chalked up a successful unpiloted <laughs> return to Earth, closing out a disappointing test flight with an on-target and apparently problem-free New Mexico touchdown. Even though I, I heard from some other articles that actually they had some issues with it, but for the most part, it came down. Uh, yeah, NASA off astronauts who are still up well there. without two astronauts, right? <laughs> yeah. Despite NASA's concerns about earlier thruster problems and multiple helium leaks in the ship's propulsion system, the Starliner had no trouble undocking and moving away from the station at 6:04 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and executing a critical 59-second deorbit braking maneuver. 
uh, at 11.17 p.m. to drop out of orbit, slamming into the discernible atmosphere 400,000 feet above the Pacific oh, Ocean. Slamming. The Starliner slamming. streaked across the Baja Peninsula and northern Mexico before descending to a parachute and airbag-assisted touchdown at White Sands Space Harbor in the New Mexico desert at 12.01 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time Saturday. So nice. Good, good job, on, boys. Right? Bravo, Starliner. So Bravo. Good job. Bo. All right. Uh, Way now, to leave I, your astronauts hanging. <laughs> I saw I saw a video on it. It was very boring. But that's you successfully its final landed thing. space junk. Yeah. So they <laughs> had a they had a bunch of like the airbags on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then they had the three big chutes that it came down. So I don't know what that little light is on the top. It's like a little yeah, tree light at for ambiance. It's a beacon of hope nice. for Boeing. It's a beacon sure. of hope. Set the mood. I guess so. I guess so. Uh, oh. But it looks Velcro, very peaceful. Start the light. Yeah, it's very, it's very peaceful. Nice. So. Yeah. Boeing got Clearly it back on the ground. you don't know mood lighting when you see it. Well, no, of course not. Of course not. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's see. They said Boeing argued. Uh, oh, wait a second. Boeing tried to convince their counterparts at NASA that the Starliner had plenty of margin and could bring Wilmore and Williams safely back to Earth. But NASA managers did not accept Boeing's flight rationale and opted to bring the Starliner down without its crew. Uh, Norm Knight, director of flight operations at the Johnson Space Center, said, quote, space flight is hard. The margins are thin. The space environment is not forgiving, and we have to be right. So have to. They, uh, they had to, but they weren't. They, so they left them up there. <laughs> Bowie, you're fired. <laughs> so let's we'll see. But what about, better safe than? So, I mean. Oh, I agree. They I didn't agree. even know if it could undock properly. <laughs> That's right. They had they had and questions like, on that too. But we kind of knew, and it was within the margins. I, I'm <laughs> sure there was some issues. Like, see, it would have been yeah. just fine. Fine. Ugh. You know, especially Butch. God yeah. damn it, I'm still up here with this woman. Butch is Come like, on. Damn it, man. <laughs> Getting headaches every morning. Oh. Damn you. But they don't have to wait long because Crew Dragon, I think, is launching in a couple of weeks to bring uh, the next two SpaceX guys up there. Um, and then, and then only six months will... after that. Yeah, February. Right. Only six All months four later. of them will come home in February. So yeah, yeah, we're unbelievable, good. man. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, but, okay, but is there, there is that saying, it, it's kind of a sarcastic joke where space nerds will be like, Yeah, space is hard. I know, and that's know. the whole <laughs> statement they just released. They're right. like, Space is hard, guys, hard, it's, it's difficult. You think it's a piece of cake, but it's not. I mean, it is definitely hard. It's just, it's such a condescending thing to say, too. It is, space is yeah. hard, yeah, but yeah. when you oh, say oh. that. Thanks. And your freaking dragon that's getting ready to launch with no problems that has I'll be like, with no problems. Well, Elon doesn't hey, think it's very hard. We're doing it's, it fairly easy. Not at sure that point in time, problem. you go, you have to respond with for some. For some. It is hard <laughs> for, for some. some. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. right. It's hard for, for some. some. It's hard for the North Koreans. Hard for Boeing. Yeah, yeah it's hard tough. for Boeing. North Koreans. So. Yeah. Well, you want some more good news? Heck oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Two in one night. What? Uh, that's right. Um, let's see. Good news for veterans' benefits, actually. Oh, I like that. No, not really. No, <laughs> you're full of feces. There's no good news ever for veterans' benefits. From Military Times comes this story. All right. Vets benefit checks could be delayed without a VA funding fix soon. Oh man, that'll be so. So, wrong. are they trying to go through another continuing resolution, or are they just trying to, you know, what whatever they're doing right now? But because the article doesn't really explain it, however, it's so wrong. When lawmakers return to Capitol Hill Monday, uh, they have just three weeks to agree upon a short-term budget extension to keep federal operations open this fall and prevent a partial government shutdown. However, that might not be their biggest fiscal challenge because the Department of Veterans Affairs officials have warned that if their own fiscal short call, shortfall isn't addressed by September 20th, tens of millions of dollars in veterans' benefits could be disrupted starting in October. Ooh. 
administrators need about $2.9 billion uh, to be approved for fiscal year 2024 ops and about $12 billion more for fiscal 2025 accounts because of a surge in benefit payouts in recent months. The damn PACT Act. Uh, <laughs> leaders have warned that would. Leaders have warned that without a solution in the next few days, compensation and pension benefit payments and readjustment benefit payments scheduled for delivery in October are at risk of being delayed. Wait, Marty, are you saying they didn't budget for something they passed? <laughs> no, not at all. Budget. Uh, no, because oh. they're like, hey, let's, you know, they, they stand let's up. Let's pass shake, this. What effect will hands it have? And they're like, Packed act. Look what we did for yeah, vets. Packed we did act. so good. Everybody gets packed act. And somebody's like, hey, do, how, how hey, many do you think are going to take advantage of this thing? They're like, doesn't matter. How much money is this going to cost? Doesn't Go matter. Ahead and stop asking bullshit questions. Just get on and celebrate. Have a piece yeah. of cake. Come on, have a piece of cake. We got these packed act right. commemorative mugs, huh? You want one of those, Glenn? <laughs> stop asking stupid questions. You won't get one of those. And the guys. Like just the asking for a rough estimate. Disabled won't get his hundred and seventy dollar check. May Come not. on, man! I That's, know. Hey, he's not going to get his check because he's got to pay back his bonus. Now he's going to default on that. Oh. Yep. Right, mm, man. You know they'll charge uh, him interest on that. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just like your taxes. Do you ever get you ever get overpaid like when you went on a TDY oh, or something like so that? So terrified oh, yeah. with that all the oh, time. Me too. Me too. Hey, like, back, well. Baby. You know, uh, I know you were trying to fight this, but you went two months yeah. past without paying us back. And Pay now you back. owe us yeah. the late yeah. fee. For the so. two civilians we have that listen to this program, <laughs> the military is horrible at paying you. So you have to constantly watch your pay, and especially horrible when you go TDY or on a trip. Yeah. And so they will either underpay you or overpay you just for funsies, I swear. <laughs> Right. And if you get overpaid, heaven forbid oh. they ever find out because you will literally, the next paycheck with no warning will be zeros. Yeah. Right. It will literally, Done. you're you're waiting for payday on the 15th and it'll be like $800 short. And you're like, yeah. or did you ever hear the case? Or just be zero. Right. Did you ever hear the case of like somebody who's like, I, they wouldn't let me. Be, they wouldn't let me PCS because they said I owed yeah. money. <laughs> I didn't know they overpaid me, but they said I overpaid them, and now I owe them a thousand. They're like, Fuck. yeah, Marty. Like, okay, <laughs> when I got out of active duty, yeah. I literally went active duty to active reserve at the same finance department on Peterson. Okay. On Wednesday, I go in there and I say, "Hey, I've been telling you about this." Here's all my information. I'm getting out of active duty. And they're like, okay. I was like, can I please have a printout of all my documents? Nice. Give me a printout of all my documents. Smart. Smart. They do an audit at that time. Oh, comes back even. Oh, that's okay. okay. You owe Great. Cash. Nope. We I owe them nothing. Okay. Yeah. Nothing on Wednesday. <laughs> going there Thursday. Yeah. And I go, here's my information. Here's this. They're like, you've been getting BAH with dependent rate. Oh. And I go, yes, you gave me that. And a year and a half ago, when I got divorced, I actually argued against you paying me that. I said, I don't think oh, I'm qualified no. for this. And they're like, yeah, you're not. I go, you guys gave it to me for a year and a half, even though I argued against it. I even had the regs still highlighted. In yeah. my little green notebook, yeah, I was like, this is what I said to you on justification for me not getting more pay. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, you shouldn't have got that. Well, don't you like us for paying you anyway? <laughs> Dude, I, exactly. Really? <laughs> yeah. Guess what happened after then? Oh, some cash. I went four months with no pay. Oh, Ooh. wow. And it wasn't a hardship. No, according to still. them, because oh. I yeah. had recently been divorced, we had liquidated our assets. I had moved all my my additional savings yeah. over into my different accounts 
and I deployed, so I reinvested that in that deployment savings account. Oh, smart. And they were like, this is not a hardship. You have plenty of money. <laughs> That's bullshit. And I'm like, That's it's four funny. months without pay. Yeah. It's a hardship, and that money's there because I'm financially responsible. Right. And they're like, yeah, so you could pay us back. <laughs> I'm like, this is yeah. completely your mistake, man. And they're like, oh, man. Tough. Oh, man. If I had been living paycheck to paycheck or showed them that I was living oh, paycheck to yeah. paycheck, they would have canceled the debt. Really? Because, you, because you were because responsible. Because I had savings and plenty of savings, according to them, I could pay it back. That's. Ooh. Oh man, God! Oh, I was paying myself out of my savings account. I like, believe treating that it been like a paycheck. IG complaint, and I would have said, mm, oh, "I am fighting this one, boys and girls." I was so livid. Oh man! Wow! Yeah, they got uh, the. Well, l let's close this out. There's not much more to the story, <laughs> but. Um, the, I think that covered it. <laughs> well, the lawmakers the are rain. saying that it's mismanagement by the VA. But the VA says the problem stems not from mismanagement, but from historically high levels of benefit payouts by the department. So get these stats. Through the first 10 months of fiscal 2024, staffers had granted disability compensation benefits to more than 1.1 million veterans and survivors. A new record. <laughs> Nearly 413,000 veterans have newly enrolled in VA health care services over the previous 12 months, up 27% from the same time frame a year earlier. Uh, uh, so that's that's basically all from the PACT Act, essentially. So, um, so they're arguing it. They're trying to get something done before the 20th. Uh, Ooh, maybe maybe I, they will get can't... it done on the 19th. I know you're arguing with the government, which is historically financially irresponsible. Bad. Yeah, but the VA, you got that $3.2 billion in lost money last <laughs> year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. it's difficult yeah. to argue that it's not mismanagement, also. I yeah. agree. Now, so, they say that uh, today was supposed to be these big arguments up to the House. Like, uh, I think American Legion was arguing it and they were they were going to try to fight to get this resolved before the end of the fiscal year. However, there are some who are saying uh, also today, lawmakers are expected to begin debates on plans for a full federal budget uh, extension past October 1st. If a solution of the VA funding shortfall is rolled into that package, it may not be passed until after the September 20th deadline potentially creating processing issues for veterans benefit checks. So don't go spend your money vets because you may not get it next month. Yeah. Well, you got a budget. Well, we don't, yeah, yeah. you have yeah. to budget your right. money. Right. No, right. Don't, don't allow the government to budget. Yeah. yeah. You got a budget. For you, budget. budget. Yeah. you got a budget for us. So. Yep. That's oh, terrible. So infuriating. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, <clears throat> All right, you want to you want something that, that'll really cheer you up? This oh, yeah. story? That wasn't enough. <laughs> no, I got some new stuff. So, um we've come up with a new way to kill our enemy. Oh. Right? Yeah, it's a good one too. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> So from stripes.com, the army just signed a 1 billion dollar deal for switchblade portable munitions. Have you ever heard of switchblade portable munitions? Well, weapons, manu <laughs> weapons manufacturer, Aerovironment. That's about as creative as Tinker mm -hmm. Strong. But <laughs> Aerovironment will deliver more switchblade series loitering munitions to the Army over the next five years after signing an agreement worth up to nearly $1 billion. Wow. Uh, the indefinite quantity contract doesn't specify how many switchblades the arm. Did you hear that? The indefinite quantity contract. Mm -hmm. oh, IBIQ. Right. IBIQ. Doesn't specify how many switchblades the army will order over the next five years, but the first deliveries are expected within months. Now, they're already using 
under a different contract, they're already using this uh, switch blade munition. So, what exactly um, is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Ooh. Let me show you Great what segue, the Eric. switch blade does. Good try. All right. Yeah, bonus points for you. <laughs> hey, now, look at this. Oh, yeah. drone, actually. He floats up his drone. Oh, oh there's a baddie on the roof. Oh, that baddie guy. on the roof. Target locked and ready. A roger. So they got a little mortar thing. Yeah. Oh! But check it out. Look what they're launching. How quiet is that? Is that really that... Yeah, look, because it's a drone. It's an explosive drone. Oh, my goodness. That is so cool. That's really cool, right? Acoustic signature. Yeah, look at all that stuff it can do. Until it lands on your ass. Oh, Ooh. it doesn't land. <laughs> no, it, ex it explodes you. <laughs> a panning camera. Look at that, man. You can see when your target is wiped to clean. Wave off, wave off. Ooh, that was a close one. Oh, like Less you can't hear that? Damage. If you hear that, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> target to target guidance. There you go. Look, select your angle of attack. Oh, that is so cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's terrifying. It is terrifying. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're retired? <laughs> I, I mean, how many guys would you how need? How would you like to be on the the offense, like or on on the opposite team, right? Ooh, yeah. Fighting us. Oh yeah, look what they got. It's not they got good, robot man. dogs chasing my ass down. They got <laughs> suicide <laughs> drones coming from the sky. Yeah, they got one dude on an island in the Pacific. <laughs> Launching shit. Just launching we forgot, shit. About, I forgot all about guy. that guy. Yeah. He's we definitely all... not getting hardship pay. Oh, uh, my goodness, man. It says the Switchblade 600, the most advanced variant, has high precision optics and an anti armor warhead and can loiter in the air for more than 40 minutes. Wow. It's also yeah. said to have a range of about 25 miles and weighs 65 pounds. That's a heavy son of a gun. Whoa, right? really? Uh, so I wonder how you how do you transport the tube? Is that well? Hold on, the Switchblade three hundred, meanwhile, has a range of only twelve miles, can loiter about twenty minutes, twenty minutes, and weighs just seven pounds. Oh, oh okay, oh. yeah, so that's nice. You end up coming up with a bigger target, maybe artillery, a vehicle of some sort. Well, uh, you know, you you talk to those light infantry guys, and they're you packing the more. They're packing mortar base plates, which are much yeah, heavier 65 pounds crazy. so yeah um pretty cool pretty cool little munition so who and who developed that do we know aero environment aero environment a e r o capital v ironment okay that's pretty cool man <laughs> that's all i can say it's the probably US a military. foreign country <laughs> no it's it's uh it's an american company i think mm -hmm. <laughs> the U.S. military has been acquiring Switchblade 300s for years, uh, especially for use by special ops. Uh, hundreds of 300s, Switchblade 300s, were also sent to Ukraine. This, this is my favorite one. As part of an arms package after Russia's invasion. So, yeah, so we we're literally Ukraine. testing our military Ukraine. equipment with Ukraine, <laughs> with Ukraine versus Russia. Maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good effect. Yep. Do the, you remember? The, the issue with that, though, is that now they've faced that environment, right? Now Russia has seen mm -hmm. that environment and faced it. So it's not really a surprise if we ever had to use it again. But. Oh, yeah. Right, right. That's right. out of the bag. But it's <laughs> it's, again, it's almost with the drone stuff. It's almost like the days of the radar detector and the police radar, right? So mm -hmm. uh, we get a really great radar detector and then the police switch to like their laser radar, you know, and then uh, 
they improve on that. And then the police go to yeah. like turning it off and on. And so uh, <laughs> it's the same thing. It seems like with these drones. So we, yeah, yeah. we show the capability then they come up with, uh, you know, disruptors or jammers countermeasures uh, or guys just shooting at them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. those did artillery you, soldiers we did that story on. Right. Yeah. Did you see that? There was a video of, uh, Ukrainian drone footage and it was a handheld drone um military drone surveillance drone but it took down a hind because Ooh, they put right into You're the kidding. tail rotor they're watching it like it is cool footage because the drone's up here yeah and you could see the hind helicopter going like this and they're like basically yeah cleared to try it and they're like all right fine worth the shot and you oh, see it go man. all the way straight into the tail road. You're like, whoa. Yeah, they're works. just making up new warfare there. That's I mean, exactly really. it. Yeah. yeah, that's really it. It's yeah. going to be. And, it, and if a, how much, I mean, it wasn't even, I don't know if it was munition. It might have been one of the 300s. I don't know. Yeah, who but knows? Yeah, it could have been. If that's how much money and it takes down a, a troop hind? carrying significant yeah. air defense piece of equipment like a hind. Yep. Sure. I mean, I mean that's you know a couple hundred million at least, probably it. maybe a maybe more, uh, for yeah. a you know a thousand dollar drone, something like that. And who don't you know? I mean, Iran, I you know, our, uh, North Korea, they're all making them. Yeah. You know, they're all making them. You know, so the other side of that argument, Jake, though, is the Russians are also experience experimenting with all of their new munitions yeah. as well yeah. i mean yeah. we got to see that new tank that hasn't that done valid. that whole lot but it was right. some high speed tank yeah. um, some other kind of vehicles but it's, yeah it's a weird testing ground war i mean it's just it's yeah. <laughs> hard to figure right and we don't get many uh news stories that i think you can trust. no but you can watch the whole thing on the internet though yeah, pretty much. Like yeah. freaking yeah. half of it's on Instagram. You're like, holy yeah. crap. Yeah, that's true. Did it's you in see a foreign language, drones? but you can see what's happening. Yeah. The two drones that have went into NATO space, two countries. No. no. Two Russian drones supposedly went into NATO space. I forgot what country. It was two countries. And both are concerned that NATO is going to respond because it was an that's act. That's what it's going to take. Uh, uh, yeah. When so. we we talk about that, okay, it's not going to be the assassination of the Archduke. It's going to be some drone overflying some space <laughs> and yeah. an over response, and there we go. Now we're all in it. Right? Yep. Yeah. God, that's so crazy. That's so possible. I'm going to get you. Uh, okay. Well, let's let's actually do a good news story. Okay, not, not, I'm not setting you up. Oh, wait, Eric. Oh, wait, Latvia, La, Latvia, Latvia, LAP, Latvia, Latvia, and Romania say Russian drones breached their airspace. Yeah, but nobody cares about those two places. <laughs> yeah, I know. Except well, they know they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. But I mean, they're like, ah, oh. uh, that's not our oh, guys. Seriously, <laughs> couldn't you Again. see the red line on the ground? <laughs> That's not <laughs> the river. The... <laughs> you know, you used to live here too, right? Don't pretend you know. like you don't know. <laughs> you crossed it. Uh, well, uh, this next story is actually a good news story, right? And we try to give, I, I know on this show, we make fun of a lot of things, but I think we've given credit to where credit is due. When it's Agreed. deserved, right? Mm. So, and in this case, it's uh, it's the Navy who deserves this credit. Okay. So, you're talking military, about an all-female submarine? Not yet. Oh, okay. Next just story, you're, you're <laughs> jumping Way ahead. To ruin the surprise. I know. Thing. I was just trying to spring all that those, on our, All those plus points you our got. Our 7,000 scroller buys on Facebook, <laughs> and you just ruined it. So, I have a new role. From military.com. Navy's innovative recruiting programs pay off as it meets recruiting goal for first time in years. Well done, Navy. Good job, guys. And mm -hmm. 
The Navy said Thursday, last Thursday, it'll meet its annual recruiting goals after struggling for years to get enough people to join ranks. Rear Admiral Jim Waters, who oversees the Navy's recruitment com command, told reporters that the service projects it will have 40,600 recruits by the end of September. Waters attributed the success to the hard work of recruiters, but as well as changes behind the scenes that made the process smoother for recruits and gave lenders, leaders, sorry, <laughs> greater insight into how the Navy's recruiting efforts are going. Uh, Rear Admiral Jeffrey, uh, I can't even pronounce his last name, C-Z-E-R-E-W-K-O. Oh, Walk. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is head of the Navy's Training and Education Command, also noted that improving and strengthening the service's abilities to track and monitor his recruiting efforts have also been key to the service's success. He said, as of late last summer, Quote, we never knew if we were winning or losing day to day until the end of the month. Now we know we're winning or losing every day. Every so day. the close tracking also meant that leaders were able to move faster to clear interested applicants through the medical screening process when in years past recruits would get snarled in months long efforts to either explain minor health issues or try and get waivers to allow them to serve. Anyway, I think all the services Remember the recruiter we talked to at the Avalanche game, Eric? Mm -hmm. She yep. said that health thing is the biggest thing that turns them away. Yep. They can't get around the little nitinoid stuff. Yep. So uh, now, so good on the Navy for meeting their their recruiting goals. However, Navy strong. what are the people that they're bringing in? So in addition to trying the conventional Women. ideas of – of offering eye-watering <laughs> enlistment bonuses and spending millions on high-profile advertisements at events like the Super Bowl, the Navy also dedicated some of its efforts to tweaking policy, just a little tweak, tweaking, to increase the percentage of the U.S. public it considered eligible. So first of these tweaks, but <laughs> it started offering exceptions over tattoos, single-parent status, and positive drug and alcohol tests. Oops. A little tweak. A little tweak. Uh, last winter, the Navy even raised the maximum enlistment age to 41. Oh, yeah, 41. And loosely. We covered that story. We yeah, covered that story. I remember that, but I didn't think it was 41. Yeah, 41. Damn. And loosened entry exam rules to allow the lowest performing academic category of applicant to join the service. Hmm. So basically, you can't lose, right? You're coming in. If you oh, wait, said, didn't we cover that too? I don't know if we covered wait, that one exactly. So the initiatives are, we've covered the tattoo policy. We did. The we weed did. test, which was yeah, we did. 30 right? days. You got to stay clean for 30 days. And Thanks if you get busted the, in boot, they'll keep you in boot. They will you not don't you need out. to have a GED anymore. Right, right. So Face that we've covered that. Yeah, and this one basically. is, I think it's ASVAB basically. I think it's like, hey, if you were, if you were like Gump, and you're like, the line is right here. Your your applicant <laughs> is right here. They're like, come on in, baby. So, Sally Fields we'll doesn't even have to work for it. No, <laughs> she doesn't even have to sleep with the recruiter to get her son in. So we'll work it. Sally Fields rocking the principal. So it teamed all these efforts with pre boot camp schools that would. Uh, either have recruits work out in order to boost their physical fitness scores or take academic courses to raise test results. So all that Navy is the one service that hit the recruiting goal. What's the Navy going to be like a couple of years from now? I don't know. I just, we'll have to see. Maybe it'll a be bunch good. of dope smoking, long hair, tattooed. <laughs> I don't know who you're channeling right now. Here. Here's the thing, though. Tattoos have always been historically Navy. And I can't even right? spell Navy right. Guys. Right. I like I, I, I always love the uh, irony of you got too many tattoos, you can't come in the Navy. But then you come in the Navy and you're like, you need tattoos to you show that you've more. been in the Navy. Dude. You know? Yeah. That's, I was shocked. I'd, I'd seen a handful of Navy guys when we were deployed. And I was always shocked at the level of tattoos i'm like it, it's excessive holy cow it's excessive. Dude, like a barcode on the back of your head and <laughs> yeah, i've seen that yeah. i was like yeah what the heck dude yeah the barcode is, is kind of strict scary, 
<laughs> I'm going to put a QR code. probably says Cheetos right or something. QR well, code. Jalapeno cheddar. <laughs> yeah. It'll lead you to my OnlyFans, Jake. Right Eagle here. Cash. Oh, <laughs> Scan the QR nice. code. <laughs> yeah. For all your QR code themed <laughs> OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god don't say you're gonna bribe him with cheetos because that's half of the reason why anna got into the military so oh yeah uh, bri bri bribing cheetos. with cheetos yeah it's too bad she's not here to defend that but what? she would actually go that's right they did bribe me with lunch <laughs> to get into the military so. <laughs> uh, that's hilarious so, all right. So, good on you, Navy. Now we're going to follow up with another Navy story. Yeah. Right? Oh, the Navy's on your, roll. Good on you. I, and I that want... picture was the the Navy class, that uh, basic training class. Yeah, it was all it was all females. It was all, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. With just varying degrees of hair. Yeah, it just it Great it almost looked all like all a bunch of things. actors wearing Navy uniforms, but. That's the Navy now. That's the that's the military right. now. So there you go. We made our goals. Yeah, they made their goals. Shut up. Go go celebrate. <laughs> uh, so from stripes.com comes this story about the Navy. So I just wanted to get your take. And I, I wish Anna was here to get her take, but she's throwing up at the moment. So <laughs> and not from listening to the podcast. She's throwing up for a different reason. So she's Locker. taking up bulimia. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Which I heard he can get 10% if the budget's yeah, nice. got the bulimia. Yeah, I got the balims. So <laughs> I'd be way for it. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh like, man, hmm, you, got you got a problem. You got a yeah. problem. Got a little uh, bit of bulimia right now. Don't you worry about it. So the Navy's first submarine, which is fully integrated for co ed crews is joining the Navy next or the Navy fleet next week. The first wow. submarine fully integrated for mixed gender crews will join the Navy fleet next week during a commissioning ceremony in its namesake state of New Jersey. The future USS New Jersey, a fast attack submarine will become a deployable part of the Navy's force during the ceremony at Naval weapons station. Errol in New Jersey on September 14th, culminating how many years do you think it took them to make this co-ed submarine? Five years. years. Oh. Five <laughs> years of construction that represents a historic shift in how Navy submarines are designed. I, wait, I, I don't understand. <laughs> like, they already had the blueprints for this, this right. sub, right? This is not a brand new innovation. No, it's not a new class. It new took birthing them five years. Restroom. Five years. Five well, years. Maybe and, to, to build it all from the ground up and all that. All right. Well, um, but this is what you get for five years. So New Jersey is the twenty third curtains. That's it. A, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of creativity. PVC, PVC pipe with shower curtains. <laughs> click, 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 click. Look look at the us. money we what do you think of that. <laughs> Co ed, huh? and, and uh, here's the server room for those special evenings. No, oh, room, don't man. start with that. Eric. I didn't say a thing. The New I Jersey is a 23rd Virginia class submarine, but is the first of its kind designed from the keel up. I don't know why they had to say keel up. It's, it's not, not ground, like they're, it's not they're not up. doing anything to the keel to make it <laughs> yeah. male or female, right? Uh, but from the keel, a design from the keel up with specific modifications for gender integration. Now, what do you get for five years of construction? Modifications included obvious ones. More doors and washrooms to create separate sleeping and bathing areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some that are more subtle, like lowering some overhead valves and making them easier to turn and installing steps in front of the triple high bunk beds and stacked laundry machines. Stairs. That's what you get for five years of design. <laughs> okay. And that's all they listed. That well, was it. then I think Jake's innovative shower curtain is big. It's huge. Dude, that, uh, that that's be. about <sighs> the level of a shower curtain. That's yeah. right. No they girl could possibly reach that valve. 
We got we we were, we were shopping at the commissary in like the pet section, and they had those steps so the pet the small dogs can get yeah. up on the bed. <laughs> yeah. We're like, why don't we just use these for the triple bunk beds? Huh? I think Have you guys seen those squatty have... potties? Dual purpose, <laughs> valve release and personal release. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, Glenn? Ain't no other ship going to have that on there. Mm-mm. A lot of innovation went into this thing, man. I, I don't <laughs> understand how guys don't get a stairs yeah. on the yeah. fourth berthing, like the fourth bed. No, you it's got to step on the bed below you. Yeah. You yeah. have to step on the bed below you to climb up there. Right. Are right. you saying women can't do that? Or if you're too tall for those standard bunks and your Dude, feet hang off, right? Your host. Yeah. Yeah. No accommodation. So the design changes were made to accommodate the growing female force of submariners. In the past five years, the Navy has seen the number of officers and enlisted sailors in the submarine force uh, who are women double for the officers and triple for the enlisted. Wow. As that's of cool. Aug- yeah. As of August 2024. 730 women were assigned to operational submarines, serving as officers and sailors on 19 nuclear-powered ballistic missile and guided missile submarines and 19 nuclear-powered attack boats, according to Submarine Forces Atlantic. The increase follows the 2010 lift of the ban that barred women from serving aboard submarines. A decade later, in 2021, the Navy announced a long-term plan to integrate female officers on 33 submarine crews and female enlisted sailors on 14 submarine crews by 2030. Before construction of the New Jersey, the Navy retrofitted existing Ohio-class submarines with extra doors and designated washrooms. So the next step, because we have all female air crews, we should all have an all-female Underwater attack submarine. That's, Are you going to take this one? I'm not going anywhere with this, man. I just stopped right there. That's, that's I I'll take it. It takes Crimson Tide to a whole new level. <laughs> it's, it's recasting Crimson Tide. Yes. Yes. Oh, that name better not change either. We're going to get smacked here, man. <laughs> Ooh, goodness. Mm. Go, where's Anna when you need her, boy? I know she would come up with something. But you know what? Think about it. that. Be that. What an amazing thing to have an all-female crew go yep. into it, go into combat, blow up an all-male crew of the enemy, and oh. then broadcast it. All the women just kicked your butt. It's a female well, crew that just him. sunk you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Not that that's cool. you know undoable, but. Uh, to all the male dominated societies that are our enemies. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 They might just like just oh, I don't know if they could take it. No. Honestly, they might you just, just got your butt kicked by a bunch of girls. Good point, Eric. I didn't know where you're going with that, but that's a good point. <laughs> good point. You talk about uh what do they call it? Like uh Tokyo Rose will have the USA Pan putting out <laughs> no, <laughs> put, yeah. putting out rhetoric of the all girl crew the propaganda in the, machine the USS and Crimson Tide just blew you up. Well, oh. you may need you may need like a you know a USA chat or somebody like that with a little so- a guy with a softer feminine voice. You yeah, know good I mean? point. That's that good would point. even piss them off even more. You know? <laughs> good point. Anything oh. possible, guys? In this, well, that's age? true. That's a good one. That's true. That's amazing. Eric, lift our spirits with some U.S. military history on this. Ooh, day. gentlemen! I, actually, I should. I we should roll the dice, or, or Jake and I roll right? the dice. Is it going to be uh, a uh, a catastrophic wipeout story, Ooh. or is it going to be a U.S. victory? Which one do you think it's going to be, Eric? I mean, Jake. Oh, I'm from the flex. I'm going victory wherever he is. There, yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's a victory. I couldn't hold that back. Come on. Yeah, Yeah, he's he's not not a good poker player. Surprise, (laughs) Eric. All right, let me let me build the story for you. Oh wait, let us guess on some random crap. Okay. 
Which it century? happened on a Wednesday. <laughs> Good call. What century was this? What, what yeah. century? Was I'm this? guessing 18th century. No, oh, no, early. Damn. No, that's it. Oh. He got it. 18th Damn. century, baby. At the start of the War of 1812, no. the British Army and Navy took control over Lake Erie and went unchallenged until the early fall of 1813. During this time, Admiral American Admiral Oliver Perry was tasked oh, with organizing Perry. and creating an American fleet to challenge the British presence and reclaim the lake and possibly the Detroit frontier because that was all British freaking hell. Yeah. Oh yeah, right, right. Perry prepared the launch. Uh, Perry prepared to launch his attack on the British Admiral Robert Barclay's fleet with nine ships in mm -hmm. early September. On September 10th, this day in 1813. American naval forces under Oliver Perry attacked Barclay's British fleet in Lake Erie. In the resulting action, Perry's forces gained a victory and claimed supremacy over the lake, causing the British to evacuate Fort Detroit. However, Perry's uh, flagship was destroyed. He had to take a little rowboat action oh, shit. over really? to the USS Ni Niagara. <laughs> oh, okay. The uh, ending engagement ended in an American victory after breaching the British lines with his flagship. Now the USS Ni Niagara, Perry's forces managed to break the will of the British Navy and ultimately force a wounded Robert Barclay to surrender. After nice. the victory, the American Navy long, along Lake Erie maintained control over the region for the rest of the war and forced British forces to Upper Canada to consolidate. Ah, kick their butt. Good. In the Battle well, of Lake Erie, man. Nice. That's very cool. Yeah. Didn't didn't Perry become a Commodore? Or is that someone Commodore? No, I'm Perry? pretty sure. Uh sounds right, you know. Yeah, I think I think he did, but I'm not sure then. He had a hell of a set of sailing <laughs> shoes, so <laughs> yeah. So it was an amazing battle. What I read was um he took his initial ship, his flagship, right into the gauntlet. And he's firing broadsides out both sides in two oh, different dang. directions. And they, of course, are firing back at him, yeah, blew his yeah. ship out of the water. He starts rowboating over to the Niagara <laughs> and demolishes the rest of them. Now, remember, he only had nine ships. So it was a hell, it. Of, a hell I, of an engagement. Every time you talk about the history of that period of time, I'm always amazed that they're like, they built nine ships? How the hell do we have any money to do yeah. any of that stuff? You know? <laughs> right? It always amazes me. So. Yeah, that's a good one, man. Yeah, I like yeah, a good one. Yeah. The Battle of Lake Erie. Yeah, it made Jake look up from whatever he's doing a couple times. I so. like it. I was looking. No, I was looking up. <laughs> I was looking up the battle. It's cool. Can you imagine if they occupy if somebody occupied <laughs> any of the Great Lakes now like today? It's oh, crazy. they control all of that. Yeah, yeah, they control all the ports, yeah. all that trade. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. That's Canada South. <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. can't is soft now. They, they, they just you know they don't do any. Can't I would take care of it for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, when uh, on a different note, when Anna is well and she returns mm -hmm. next week, and we and we we wish Juan well on whatever he's doing. A little bonito. Maybe he's in the middle of sideburn class tonight I'm not no, sure. oh it's the it's the waxing session that's why it couldn't oh it. very good man good that's point. a good one mm -hmm. but when anna comes back next time we greet her i'm going to say that uh to when i introduce her i'm going to say and with a warm tink blink ah and we got <laughs> tink strong even my sister was like what is that girl talking about the tink blink? And I was like, that was funny as shit. She goes, she's a little wild, huh? And I was like, yeah, I guess she is. She is. So she's a good fit. Yeah. 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 She's fun. Well, are we an end depth then, gentlemen? End depth. Oh, oh yeah. In depth. In depth. <laughs> Came alive there, Jake. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of all of us here, I'd like to thank you for listening today. Please like, share, subscribe, and let us know how we did in the comments. Uh, and make sure next week that you are not. Oh, push the button, Marty. Late for changeover. Yeah, I pushed it too damn late. <laughs> no, that was a good one. That was good. Man, thanks for the week. Uh, 
And thanks to everyone listening and watching, and we'll see you next week. Yeah, and for all your Crimson Tide reenactments, go to Mr. History's OnlyFans. Scan his QR code. Scan his QR code. (laughs) Or the QR code pasties. Eric, making him bounce. Okay, With the spoon, oh, you can't see the... I can't. I can't. I can't. Yeah. You can't see the titty flex bounce with the black shirt. I'm sorry, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> history. Yeah. It's all over. That's going to be so my new tattoo on my history. head. Right here. Mr. History. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Like, oh, they didn't center that with it yet. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. Later, dude. All right.